I am so honored to be here, really, to have a chance to talk to women. Like, these are my patients. This is the only time we're going to talk about boys today. And I just wanted to show you, like, how I spend most of my time. So, for me, this is really exciting. I started in obstetrics. <laughs> so, I fell a long way from there, mostly because they found me. And this is American football. So I don't even know how many of you are familiar with or follow or would even know anything. Um, I barely know myself, other than this is the band of brothers that I work with and I love them. Like it's, this is where I found my home. So um, this is what I see day in and day out. However, there are so many principles that are shared, you know, for training and everything between men and women. And I uh, definitely want to get as much information that would be useful to you through here today. So I just want to ask a couple of questions before we begin. How many people are mothers? Mothers, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah me too. I feel like we've learned a lot from our children like so much so about communicating and getting our point across and making changes in other people. And how many people are healthcare practitioners? Anybody health, healthcare practitioners? No. Um, anybody like coaches that work have clients? Okay, all right. And then how many people just do it for them, sport for them? I see, great. I see all these like beautiful bodies and I'm just like, this is fascinating. Why didn't I work with women? Like I just thought that was really so good. Like really, I was like, we're um, definitely an amazing species <laughs> as women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, but anyways, I work with these smelly boys every day and that's what I do. And this has been my experience for, um, how long have I been doing it? Uh, Twelve years. I've been a physician for 21 years, and these boys, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, something in that um, range. So we're, today, I just, again, I'm trying to get across to you something that would be useful to you. So I'm going to just kind of intuit and turn into, tune into that to see if I can just really get you something that's useful. I am a naturopathic physician, so I practice, I'm a primary care physician, so people come to see me for whatever um, goes on with their bodies, but I'm a naturopathic physician, so I use natural means in order to solve the issues. And I'm just a doctor, so I know that if I were also a coach or something like that, that it might be more useful today, but you have to understand that I just see things as a physician in my practice, not because I'm limited in the rest of my life, but as a physician, that's how I handle things. So when I'm dealing with something, and if you ask a question, I'm always thinking, okay, there's something wrong and something needs to be fixed, or we're trying to optimize, but I'm thinking about a physician. So some of the issues that you come up with in the gym, it's like, how do I push past and push past and push past and reach these other goals? And I'm saying what's best for the body. So I'm probably the most conservative person ever because I always want optimal health because I want my patients to know me for their lifetime. So even though they may present at, the, at their young age, I still have to think what would, if I make these choice for them now, what would their life be like when they're 50 or 60 or all that kind of stuff. It, that's not the case when you're doing these competitive things that some of you girls are doing, the powerlifting, CrossFit, all that kind of stuff. A lot of it, a lot of it is like for now. So I'm not as extreme as um, some people because I'm always going to be thinking, it's like, does the body really want to be doing that or not? Okay. All right, so women, all right, this is us, right? So this is what changes um, exercise, fitness, energy, and everything for us, especially when we're mothers, because not all the work can be done by somebody else. You know, we still want to be a part of that. So we're gonna work and go about and do our business all day long, and then at night we still have to um, clean house cook and child care all at once and somehow get a workout in there as well all safely keeping our bodies healthy <laughs> it doesn't really happen anymore where I live so um, we're all burnt out yeah we're overworked and everything else in between and that is the biggest part of what changes 
things for us. You know, a lot of those like rings or rings or whatever, those watches that everyone has now, if you see the differences between men and women, it's like, why are we still having these elevations and everything at women at night? It's because we're doing like the cleanup and putting kids to bed and all these sort of things at night. We go to our second job at night. So um, again, a balance. How can we find the best balance? Make goals to optimize health and at the same time, try to juggle all these things okay so well, I'm going to talk to mostly today about like the adrenal glands because they're kind of the hub of the body for all the stress and we're just gonna this is an indication of what stress is because I don't just mean somebody yelling at you or an argument that you had with your partner or something like that. Stress is all these things and then some. This is a very short list of what stress is involved and I put the systems on this side but and the adrenals at the top however all of them are tied into the adrenals and a little further on we're going to go into just energy because if you know something about the adrenal glands already maybe you're already thinking oh it's just the energy system and it's like it is true it's true it's energy however it's also there's other systems involved uh, yeah, there's other hormones, thyroid hormone and such, and then there's the bits and pieces of the actual cell. And I want to introduce these terms to you just because these, this is what we need to be thinking of every day when we're trying to make choices. Certainly, the information I have to share with you today in an hour and a half isn't complete. I can't get through everything today. And also, you won't remember everything that we talk about today. So I want you to be able to go home just from today and go, I know how to make changes. When you think of the very basic, like what is it in my body that needs to make a change? What is it really asking for? And what step can I take right now in this moment giving these choices? And then now, and then now, and then now. And now is our point of power. So what is the choice that I can make right now in order to make a difference if I'm trying to change the stressors in my life? Okay, so infections are really, as a, again, as a physician, infections are a really big stressor in our life. And when you're working in a gym, that's not what you're gonna be talking about with your people every day. But for me, that's always when someone comes in and they're complaining of, um, fatigue issues, energy issues, I already know that they're overworked, especially with the women with that picture that we just saw. I already know that we've taken on way more than we can handle in a day. So they've already looked at that already. So I'm trying to look for the other things. Infections is a big thing for me. Um, this is electromagnetic, the EM, that's the frequencies that are harmful to our bodies. And that is a huge stress. And again, I don't know anything about what it's like over here, but for us, we're getting into this 5G. Is this a thing here? 5G, do you know that word? Okay, so it's like we all want better signal for our cell phones, you know? So we're increasing in 3G, 4G, and now we're into the 5G. And it's very detrimental. The frequency that they're using for the cellular devices is very detrimental for the human health. So it's one of the biggest outside stresses that we have that is unseen and mostly unspoken about because industry is promoting that. Who doesn't want a better signal? And we're all saying, let's do more, let's do more, let's do more, instead of saying, let's do different. You know, there are other frequencies out there, by the way. It's like, we don't need to be using these frequencies, but these frequencies that we've generated actually came out of warfare tactics. Many years ago, they asked some physicists, it was like, what frequencies would be damaging for humans so that we can go and put that in there somewhere in a whatever, our enemy territory and harm the whole population. Guess what frequencies our cell phones work at? It's devastating that someone would make that choice, but that's what we're dealing with. So that's a big one. Um, toxins for sure in your environment, but also as women, it's like how many things do we put on? You know, we need something for the hair, we need something for the arms, we need something for everything, and that's a big one. And then also our environment. If we don't have regulations in our environment about our toxins, we're being overloaded. So to me, these are the biggest ones at the top that most people aren't talking about.
Okay, emotional. Everybody thinks of that when they think of stress. It was like, oh yes, I'm stressed. Guess what happened to me today? You know, it's traffic, it's a partner, it's whatever. And they think that's what the what we're thinking about when we say stress. That's a big part, but it's one part. Uh, injuries, of course. I deal with injuries every day. I wouldn't have a job <laughs> if I didn't deal with injuries. And it happens to all of us. And for my boys, they play a violent sport. So injuries are going to happen. But mostly the injuries that I deal with are just simply them being overtrained, not rested enough for the activity that's required of them. And then deficiencies. So again, thinking that you can just have your three meals a day or whatever, and then play a sport, something extreme. And that's what powerlifting is and CrossFit and all these things, they're all extreme. So it's like, it's easy to say, well, I'm just gonna eat this food and that will be enough. And it isn't enough. I like to talk to my guys about bank accounts because they understand that really well. It's like, what did you put into your bank account and what did you take out of your bank account? And it was like, let me tell you your games, your practice, your workout, your late night, your alcohol, your telephone use, like the, your phone use is these, um, the, the fields here. Um, that's all taking out of your bank account. So tell me what you put in. What went into your bank account today? Um, and then allergies, again, I hardly talk about allergies, but it's huge. I, I rarely talk about them. I don't even have time to talk about allergies, but it's a huge thing. And then overtraining, that's key for all of my guys, and I can't get around it. So this has become my specialty, how to practice medicine when 100% of your patients are overtrained. There are no rest days. It doesn't work out for the way that the football um, season goes. Okay, so all the things I'm going to, not all the things I'm going to talk about today, but when you look at some of the slides I'm about to show you, I wish they weren't in there, but it was like, I can't think of another way of doing it because it's the way that we've always done it and that's the information that's out there. So when I was gathering these slides together, I was like, oh, here I am using this model that's so old. So. I like to think of it, the, the diagrams that you're about to see that we're gonna look at, that's perfect for paper dolls, right? <laughs> that, that's what it applies to. And we have to think much bigger than that when we're actually trying to apply these modalities to something. So yes, the slides that you'll see match this type of model, and then we still have to think outside of it. But the cool part about that is that's where all the power comes from. These diagrams, this is what I'm talking about. Do you remember these from science class? Yeah. yeah, okay, and this goes this, and this goes this, and this goes this. And it was like, this is what we learned in school, and the whole time I was in school, I was like, this is not right. Like, you're missing it. It was like, I was a research scientist before I went to medical school, and I was like, this can't be right. I was like, I don't know what right is. I'm just my first year of medical school, but this can't be right. There's something about this that just, it's like, this goes on forever in order to complete the whole body. It's like there isn't enough of everything in order to do it. Like, do you know how much glucose is in our bodies right now? It's like well, a teaspoon. You know, it's like how that's our whole total in our blood. And we think of all the things that glucose does, like everything. Um, it's like, how is that running the system? How is it that we're animated? So when we look at it from a different perspective, that was the two-dimensional, the paper dolls, the two-dimensional, here we go, this is what we really look like. This is the outside of a cell, these are the receptor sites, and this is whatever it is that's coming in. So whether it's glucose or a thyroid hormone, adrenal hormone, anything like that, it's like that's what's coming in into insulin, whatever it is, coming into these receptor sites, this is how we're animated. And as it turns out, it is not just stuff that we've heard about, like hormones and food and everything that fit into these receptor sites. If you think about us made more so like this, you will realize that there is so much that's feeding back into those receptor sites and informing our cells and our DNA as to what to do. How does a liver cell know to be a liver cell? this. It's not that circle diagram, which we are going to look at, but it's not, it's not that. That doesn't work. It was like, how, if all our cells start as stem cells, how does it become a liver cell and not a skin cell? It's this.
So it's information that says, now sell, that is nothing specific, become something specific in order to do a function in the body. And don't forget, you're part of this whole system. So this shows more so, like, do you know what acupuncture is? The system of acupuncture, right? Do you know how many thousands of years old it is? This is what I think they used to see. I think that our vision has changed and I don't see this anymore. Unfortunately, when I look at a patient, I have to be super slow and dumb and ask questions. Where's your pain? How bad does it hurt? How long have you had it? If I could see this, I wouldn't need to ask any of those questions. And I think this is the way they used to see it because this includes all the meridians along the body so that they knew where to stick there. They would use wood and they would use big chunks of metal and they would stick it in. It was like, how did they know? How did they know that the eyes were related to the liver? How did, how did they know that? I think this is what they saw. When they looked at other humans, this is what they saw. And the only reason we do, most of us don't see this anymore is because we've been told we couldn't. Okay? And um, how many times do we hear that? You know, certainly as women again which is why I'm so impressed with this gym that you have I was like someone must have told you you couldn't do it did you listen <laughs> no so I work with football players now American football players I'm Canadian and I always wanted to work with Canadian hockey players that's when I was younger so I tried to do that I tried to get into that and everyone said no girls no girls no girls and I believed them so I went on to medical school and I was like, how unfortunate. I just have to do other things in life. Maybe I'll just deliver babies, which is amazing, but um, <laughs> not at all what I was set out to do. And as it turns out, life just brought me back and here I am, a woman working in sport. And it was like, okay. It was like, but it, but it wasn't for me. I am not that strong. Like I, I was like, oh, I can't because I'm a woman, then I won't, you know? And I just left it at that. It, a lot of cool things have happened on the way. I don't have any regrets, but now that I'm my age, I'd be like, no, I don't, no, I don't, you can't tell me that because I'm a woman. I don't listen to that anymore. Things are, things have to be different for us because we're actually stronger as it turns out than our male counterparts in a lot of other ways because smell isn't everything. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about the adrenals glands again as a jumping off point. And, I, and I'm trying to get into, it's like, what is it that you actually need in your day-to-day -day lives from the base of this adrenal glands? What else is it that would be interesting to you? This picture, I just want to show you that the adrenal glands affect all these systems. There's nothing that's really left out there. There's nothing that's not encompassed in there. And this is the power that the adrenal glands have on our whole system. Again, look, this is more back to the paper doll thing, because when you really look at energy, we're more looking at that last diagram of the human with the light. So by the way, we are light beings, by the way. So even though we may not be illuminated as strong as those light bulbs, so we don't see the glow, again, I think because our vision has changed, but also we, um, we're just, our, our light doesn't shine in the same way that the light bulb does, but we still shine when, when we're living. You know, that's what distinguishes us from a dead body as to a real body, is that our DNA is made in a helical structure and it pumps. And so we give off light. So we are light beings, that diagram is, a good representation of where we are so if we want true power and healing we can use light and a lot of people have already done that with lasers you know that's a light modality that heals anything we can take a light it's kind of cool and it can heal anything okay so the most important things that um, I think that you're gonna think are important is the blood glucose how it changes that because we're talking about body comp a lot in this field. So how can we change our body comp? For me, I'm looking mostly at 
the immune system because this is what's important to me the things that are important that we can do every day the way that we handle our activities of daily living is with a super strong immune system and as it turns out the adrenal glands are a huge player in that so our immune system by the way handles infections and inflammation same system um, the same immune system handles both of those. What happens when you do extreme sport? Inflammation. Every day is inflammation. It's not, it's not the villain. It is, however, responsible for all the chronic degenerative diseases. It doesn't matter what you call them. Cancer, arthritis, diabetes, they all started heart disease from a root of um, inflammation. So for me, managing this immune system is really more important than anything. Blood glucose, yes, of course, I would like to see that in a normal range. That's definitely gonna change your life when we manage to bring that back into a normal range. However, that's not my daily focus. And again, for me, everything is speed. Like I really, really need to get these people well very quickly. So the more that I can manipulate and manage their immune system, which is managing inflammation and infections, the better I will get a response in what I'm trying to do. Okay. <coughs> There's some really boring slides in this. And the only reason I put it in here is because when you see a whole long list like this, you'll be like, oh, that's a lot. I, I don't need to know what everything is, but that's a lot. So when we're looking at like, hey, does my client have an adrenal problem? It was like, you have all these symptoms. And what I was gonna do is like follow it up with a thyroid slide and then an estrogen slide. And you would see these similar, similar symptoms on all of them. Because guess what, we're that, like that, um, I'm gonna call it the light body that we saw. I'm gonna call it to that. That's what we are. We're that light body so that everything is expressed very similarly when we make little changes in all the little control knobs. So, but there's some classic ones with the adrenals. And when you are thinking about, um, okay, well, does this client have an adrenal problem or a thyroid problem? There are some distinct differences. After a good workout, the adrenal patient feels amazing because we've increased cortisol. We're like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. And they feel great, you know? Have you had that workout where you're in the gym and it was just like, I might die here. And then there's no other problem. Like what else matters? I almost died in the gym today. So that fight, this traffic, that doesn't matter anymore because I survived that workout. It's good, right? <laughs> it's very good. It's very good for us to do to get some perspective because when we don't we get caught up in the small world the small world of me 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 and it's like it's not really what we're about we're actually part of this bigger this whole project called the human the human species and so we should be looking outwards we should be looking at our fellow men women um, to see how we belong in our culture and in our society wherever it is that we are these things though give us a little bit of a like how do I distinguish is this really an adrenal issue is it something more of a thyroid this salt craving is a big one oh, let's see weight loss weight gain any symptom of the body you, you say anything it could be a problem with your immune system your thyroid your estrogen testosterone uh, tummy troubles food poisoning it could be anything you know a, a drug interaction or whatever it, all of that weight loss weight gain could go in in all of that of course all of them have an energy problem you know weakness tiredness and other fatigue okay every again every system can also be responsible neurological everything can be responsible for that first one but this one about the lights when they're wearing their sunglasses all the time not just for the Instagram it's like then it's like why why are they wearing their sunglasses you know it, on the inside or why do they always this is like a thing they don't walk out of the building into the light until they have their sunglasses that's a clue right there so the things that you can see in your patients every day a thyroid patient if they did a workout and they felt tired 
they would be very, very tired after, and it would stay tired. It would be a long time before they recovered. So again, changing the workouts based on the smallest things that you know, you don't need to do a medical intake. But even with yourself, if you're like, what is this fatigue today about in my training and how should I approach it? Certainly when we have problems in this area, we don't flog a dead horse like you it's already it's given your body has given everything it has nothing left to give going to the gym okay so back to my boys they love their cars too cars are a big thing for them it's an extension of you know what and so it's like it's important to them to show this is where I came from look at me now and um, so their cars are really important so I always take it back to their cars you know it's like you can't run on empty it's not possible you cannot ask your car to take you anywhere unless you put gas in it Okay. When you have adrenal fatigue, you don't have any gas. Okay. You can't ask your body to do that. Also, a workout, and for them a game or a practice, is like a car accident, something they also understand. If you remember that nothing good happens in the gym, nothing good, positive, healthy happens in the gym, I'm talking about your physical body. It's pretty good to have girl power in there. That's different. But when you think about the actual bits and pieces that make up your body, that's not where the good stuff is happening. If we have to call it good and bad. The good stuff happens in the recovery. So that happens at the dinner table and when you go to bed. But the gym is a withdrawal from your bank account. Okay, that's not putting in. The response that you get from doing an exercise, that's a deposit into the bank account because now we've broken down something down. Your body, just like a car accident, is going, holy shit, something just happened. It was like, now I need to do something in order to get better. So when you're working with clients that maybe have some of these and are really extreme, the way that you start with them is not a full session like you are possibly capable of doing right now. They can't do it, they're not there yet. So how can we bring movement and everything into them without um, it get depleting from the bank account? All right, so they're broken, the gym breaks you more. It's a good breaking though. And the exercises, you know, that you do in lifting, because I don't really know what all of you do for exercise, but the exercises that you do in lifting, they're pretty specific for the muscle tissue. What gets caught in the crossfire are the connective tissues. So that's worse in a cardio exercise than it is in a weight training session. So these are things to remember again when we're doing the fine tuning. It was like, that's a good response that you're gonna get afterwards. So the kind of car accident you're gonna have after a good weight training session, it was like, okay, I got this. You know, as long as I've broken things down, as long as I have the nutrients to repair it, it's gonna be a quick recovery because it's muscle tissue. And if you think of muscle, what it looks like, it's very red and bloody, easy, easy to heal. If you look at your connective tissues, the tendons or ligaments, cartilage, meniscus, all that stuff, they're very white, which means they don't have a lot of blood flow. So they're going to be harder to heal. So we want to spare those in the gym. The least that you can, yes, they're caught in the crossfire, but the least that you can pick on them, the better it is the recovery. So the better it is to make positive changes in your life. So imagine taking the extreme, uh, running a marathon. Let's say there's really bad pollution that day too. It was like, that would be the worst thing, you know, in the exercise realm for your body. It was like to wear out the bits and pieces that don't recover well. So all the white bits the ligaments, tendons, all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, let's look at what's next. Yeah. All right, so this is a diagram I draw for all my patients, uh, all my, oh, look at that, Ovar E. Um, this is what I draw for all my female clients, which are few and far between, but again, I started in a women's only practice because men aren't having babies at all right now, still. Okay. 
So I always draw this diagram for my women so that they truly understand you cannot separate these, okay? So likewise, you could say mind, body, spirit. You cannot separate those either. So you can change all these points of the axis. Everyone talks about the hypothalamic, hypothalamic pituitary axis. You could do, draw these on your triangle as well. However, it would just be even better if we just said, put your favorite colors on there. Let's talk about that. Because, because, because every time that we appeal to what we truly, truly love is something that we're going to do and we're going to stick to. But this is what I love. I love these body parts. So this is what I draw in order to explain them to them. The thing, again, as a physician, so you guys are going to catch people differently as a coach. It's very, very different. But as a physician, nobody comes into my office with this problem. So even though we call this the kingpin that's um, directing the issues in these two endocrine glands, this one is the kingpin. But nobody comes to me when they're here. Most rarely people come to me when they're here. Mostly women come to me when they're here. My periods hurt. I didn't get one. I pee my pants every time I have a period. These are the things that drive women into the office. This does not. Mostly because in our society, we are trying to keep up with those boys and it would be unacceptable for us to say that we're tired because no one wants to listen to the fact that we worked all day, then did the house chores and managed the children and did all of that. Nobody complains about this. People will change their behaviors and habits in order to accommodate this and not talk about it. Starbucks is doing very well, thank you very much, as a count of that. People will mask these symptoms here. This is when they cannot live with it any longer and they feel like they um, are allowed to come to a doctor and do self-care. It would be great if you could catch people here, or better yet, if you're starting with women, don't let them get here ever. That would be the best. So you get to see these women at a completely different stage with completely different um, outcomes, like their goals. Their goals to you are gonna be different than the way they say it to me, and your words believe it or not, will be way more powerful than mine. As a physician, it's very boring to be told, eat properly, stop smoking, go to bed early. I was like, that's so boring. But coming from you, talking to other women, so powerful. It was like, do you want this workout to improve your guns or whatever it is that their like goal is. It was like, they're going to say, yes, I do. If you want this workout that you worked so hard, you thought you were going to die in the middle of it. Do you want that to improve your guns? Yes, I do. What can I do? Go to bed early. Huh? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that from me. Everyone's like, mm, I already know. I already know. I already know. You don't know me. That's what I get. You don't know me. It was like, you don't know my life. You don't know how busy I am. But the way that you can say it to your women clients is so much more lasting. And guess what? It doesn't cost anything to go to bed. It's free. So money isn't even the <clears throat> issue. <clears throat> Actually, as women, sometimes <clears throat> it is lost income for us, which is unfortunate. But again, that's our society where we're completely overworked and we don't have any help raising children or anything like that. Most of us are single moms trying to do everything ourselves. So um, we don't get the benefit of going to bed, but that's when we can do other things. It's not just going to bed early. There's other things that you can say that will get you more out of that workout. But because you're with them in the trenches and they're like, did you see that? I almost just died. And you're like, yes, you did. And you know, if you want to get some good muscles out of that, your near death experience, like <laughs> let's just, go to bed early, you know, and it's a great place. The gym is a great place for healthy comparisons. Unfortunately, there are many systems these days that make unhealthy comparisons between us. And when we get caught in that, it's like then we strive for things that don't match us.
not our physiology, not our anatomy, or not where we are on this. Like we all have some degree of imbalance in this system. And it's like, but when you just look at somebody else's numbers, okay, now I have to ask after I've already put my foot in my mouth, how many people do CrossFit? Oh man, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm only a doctor, okay? I, I can only see the world this way. And I, I love what CrossFit has done in creating some type of community. I have CrossFitters as patients. This is how I know. This is how I know because I see their blood work. And this is why I say things about CrossFitters. I always say, CrossFit, all you want, if you show me good blood work and otherwise I never treat blood work I don't look at the paper and go oh okay let me see I'm just gonna look at this not talk to you I'm just gonna look at this see the changes that we have to make here's your prescription mrs. Jones go never ever ever do that <clears throat> I always treat the patient but when, when I'm working with the CrossFitter it's really good for me because the blood work is horrible and it's unfortunate because the community that has been created in CrossFit is to say you're not tired no, you're two reps shy in doing like this, whatever, top 10% of your region or whatever, like slam this Becky or Susan or whatever it is that you're doing today. And it was just like, everyone else around you has done better. Everyone else in this whole city has done better. And that's what I don't care for with CrossFit because I love comparisons to help you have an idea of where you're trying to go. But that is what um, I find sometimes we're chasing. And it was like, how about we just chase what's for us how about like we have goals of our own and not to try and fit into some hierarchy and um, one time just one time I was invited to go with a patient to a CrossFit competition to help them when they compete and I was like this is good for me I'm gonna learn a different sport and how to be um, helpful in that um, like it's supportive in my medicine in this sport had no idea what CrossFit was before I went there. That seizure thing that you do on the bar, apparently it's <laughs> called kipping. Kipping, yeah. I was very worried for the people all day long. Yes, I definitely had wine that night because I was like, oh my God, there's no ambulance people here. <laughs> there's all these people doing this and they're collapsing under the bars and this doesn't look very good. But the one thing, first of all, I was never invited back. <laughs> I still see that patient, but I'm not invited back to um, a competition again because of the extreme horror on my face the whole time. <laughs> but the one thing he said, if, if you come back, don't let me look at the leaderboard during the whole thing. And it's like, it, so it can work for you, that comp competitive sense, but for him, in his mind, he was always so far behind. Like, I'm so far back, I can never get to where I want to go. And at the end of the day, he did very well, but it was his own idea of where he should have been and all that kind of stuff. And so that was a competition, but it still works that way, you know, in the rest of it. And, and again, I love, um, I had another patient who started in her gym, it's a regular gym, and then she, they added a CrossFit section, but they call it Intelligent CrossFit. And I was like, that's amazing. Like someone actually is putting some thought between it, which means that the body parts get renewed and restored before you go on to the next activity. So for those of you who do CrossFit know that that's not okay. And it's just more, 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 like for reps for time, for reps for time. And it was like, oh my God, like how could you all not need wine at the end of that? Like I just don't, I don't, I don't get um, that aspect. <clears throat> Again, this is when we as women are looking for challenges that we may not get in any other place. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later. Okay. And thanks. All right. This is so boring. So boring. So I'm going to go through these really quickly. Here's the adrenal glands that make all these things. There's two parts of it. There's an outside and inside. They make different hormones. So we talk about cortisol a whole lot. How many of you have heard about cortisol? Yep, okay. It makes cortisol, DHEA, epinephrine, norepinephrine, um, in fact, 50 um, different chemicals coming out of here. But we only really talk about cortisol, <clears throat> which, um, again, shrink. Oh, okay. Important to know where it is, though. Here's the kidney, and this is where the adrenal glands sit. And so there is a very strong connection to all those other systems like we saw frequent urination and all that kind of stuff um, again kidneys are right there kidneys control the waterworks 
of the, the body. Okay. Okay, so again, aldosterone, which manages minerals, all that kind, and the, and the um, water flow and all that kind of stuff. Sex um, hormones, we do hear a lot about this. So the DHEA, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, those all come out of the adrenals, not just the cortisol. Okay, inside part, the norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine. We hear about dopine, dopamine more often these days, yes. And then we talk about adrenaline. Again, that's the same, okay. All right, so again, we have a stress response. So when we talk about adrenal health, we can talk about so many different things because we're, we have different phases. So at the beginning, we have this stress, whatever it is. We've all heard like running from the saber tooth tiger. Okay, fight or flight, we wanna do something right away. We're gonna have these changes in our physiology. How do we get the most changes out of the stress? How can we run away or fight if we're badasses? So we want to have our muscles tapped in, tuned in, like as much as possible right away. So we're gonna have a lot of blood flow to the muscles. We're gonna be able to change our breathing. This is very good for a fight. Very good for being in the gym. Not so good when we get past that. If we try and do that for too long, the stress is supposed to, like we're supposed to run away to the cave and get away and then stop, okay? But it just doesn't go that way. And when, you know, we're comparing ourselves you know, to, you know, how did you do Rebecca, Bucky, Susan today at the end of the day? It's like, that's when your stress keeps just going up again at night and night and, and it, we never get that break. So we don't come out of the alarm phase. And this is when these things are great. However, not all day long. This is what's going to wear the heart out eventually. And then the resistance, it's like we've so somehow managed to cope. We make DHEA still, we make cortisol still. So cortisol aging, DHEA anti-aging, and we're managing to get along with it, but then um, eventually we will run out and we will exhaust hormones, nutrients, all that kind of stuff. Okay, again, <clears throat> these are the boring ones. And um, I'm sorry that they're in here, but these, when you see these slides, you go, this is the good things that cortisol does. We release glucose because then we can run, 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 run. run. And then, um, we can get it from different places stored in the liver, stored in the muscle. We can um, mobilize our stores. It's a great anti-inflammatory. This is crucial, very crucial, crucial. So sometimes you hear that you have something that's really swollen or whatever, and you go to the doctor and they give you cortisone, yes? Prednisone, yes? So that is because it's an amazing anti-inflammatory, but there's always a price to pay when you take it from the outside. Um, and then immune responses also improve because you better not get the flu when you're running away from a saber tooth tiger. And then we have influences re reproduction. This is a good thing. It's necessary for the sex hormones to work, but you will also see it influences reproduction on this side because it is also the bad part of it. So again, when we're stressed for too long or blood sugar stays high too long, this is very damaging to have high blood glucose the whole time. That you know, that will take you straight to diabetes and a shorter life. Also, diabetes isn't something that kills you right away, which means that you're gonna have a lot of what we call morbidity, so a bad life before you finally die. Um, and then breakdown. <clears throat> and this is what we really, really care about when we want to train and we want to put our bodies through this uh, heavy exercise routine is that we want our collagen to be super fit. So we want this burst of cortisol in the gym and then we want it to be over after that. And then again, <clears throat> when we're high, when we're elevated, we don't get the thyroid, active thyroid that we need, the active part of the thyroid hormone. And we know that thyroid is involved with metabolism. So a lot of us are doing this to lose weight and we won't be able to do that. So you work really hard in the gym and you say, well, this should be good, you know? I'm bringing my cortisol up. I should have all these uh, beneficial response. I should be losing my fat. But our metabolism slows down, in fact, because we've kept our cortisol too high too long, and then it's impossible for us to have the thyroid hormone active. And that's just one thing that the thyroid does when we're looking at body fat. But it's really all the systems that are working that way. When we talk about the problems of 
um, an adrenal issue. It can be anything because it depends where we are in the stress response. So things can be really low, slow, and sleepy. Things can be super overactive and wound up tight. So we can have like a high blood pressure, everything on this side. Um, here's the hair growth. Thanks, but no thanks. Did your mothers tell you this when you were like growing up? By the way, your facial hair is just going to continue to get worse as you get older. <laughs> I, and, and cortisol makes you old. Yeah, I know. I have to be honest, there's many times in my life that I wanted to be a boy. Now that I'm this age, I definitely am so glad that that never happened. Like, thank God we can't get everything we ask for. Because I thought it would just be so much easier to have not only opportunity, but to play sport, to be competitive. And I, I am old, so there just wasn't opportunities for us as uh, um, females back in the day. And also, when you put some effort in into like changing your diet and going to the gym and all that stuff, and you see a male counterpart doing the same thing, not even, you know, and you're working so hard. And it, it's, it's because we have so many other hormones. We have the gift of so many other hormones that we have to get around. And I see that now, especially after having a child. <coughs> it's pretty cool. They can never do that. That's just for us. All right. I can't read this. But anyways, everything really slow on the side, things not functioning. And it's because we don't have enough cortisol. We've worn ourselves out. And then this is actually the early phase when we have a whole lot and we get super um, hyperactive, really. All right, so the, again, this is something that we often think about, especially with training. It was like, how does this cortisol from this adrenal gland affect the ovary? And mostly, or the sex hormones, because it's not always the ovaries directly. So because we have these changes in blood sugar, because we need the sugar to run away from the tiger, yes? But we shouldn't always be running away from the tiger. And we haven't necessarily learned good techniques for turning down, calming down, for turning off Instagram and everything. Um, this, these are the, usually the things that people are interested in. Because mostly it's like, how does cortisol relate to the fat, especially the fat around the middle? I think Wikipedia has actually changed, if you were to look under there now, under cortisol um, issues. I think my picture's there. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure because my schedule and the things, the events of my life in the last six months have made it so that everything has fallen out. So I actually used to train, which is hard to tell now. But this is what happens. And you think it's never going to happen to you until life happens to you. And then it's like, these are the things that we can change and focus on <clears throat> if we just prioritize ourselves. So here, how do we get fat from cortisol? We have super high um, blood sugars, which means that, and the cortisol is also turning the insulin off, and then we do have the um, insulin that's still trying to be there because it's trying to clean up the sugars, and then we become insulin resistant, okay? This is the best part of going to the gym when you're trying to deal with those kind of issues. Um, certainly fat loss, certainly fat loss around the middle. When you do a workout, you're so much more sensitive to insulin. <clears throat> which means we get to have carbs afterwards. <laughs> no, okay, 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 you have to earn your carbs, apparently, but uh, to me, every day is carb loading day these days, just to make it through. Um, I don't have days off, and um, so don't do this in your life. Just do as I say, not as I do. But it's the, it's the boys also, my patients also don't have days off, and um, this is what's hard, so. This off season, it's my goal to train somebody so that I don't have to be there all the time. Um, but um, when we are able, w when you know all the different ways that you can manipulate your cortisol, it's like, okay, well, I can't do this. Um, I, I don't know, e eat a steak tonight or whatever. I don't have access. I can't cook it. I only have access to bad meat or whatever. It's like there's still other choices that you can come around and make um, a change in your cortisol and make a change in your sex hormones. So this is especially important when you're ready to have a baby then. 
it was like, well, so how do I get it so that everything is in balance? I'm not estrogen dominant, all that kind of stuff, which is what happens because remember that triangle, those are systems are all related and the cortisol overacts on the thyroid and overacts on the um, sex hormone system. So uh, again, more estrogen we have, the more we'll aromatize, the more we aromatize, the more estrogen we have. Who designed us anyways? Anyways, I'm sure there's, there's a purpose in all of it and we have to learn to work with it and not always be um, fighting it. Okay, yeah, so again, it's like, why is it that we just turn fat into fat, we have more fat, and then it just comes more fat, and how do we get rid of this cortisol, and why is it a good thing when the doctor gives it to us, why is it a bad thing when we make it, all that kind of stuff. It's an enzyme that takes our inactive hormone into the active hormone. Every hormone has that type of thing. We all have a handhold that takes the hormones around the body. How do we make it active? In this case, this particular enzyme is um, influenced by these things. So your genes do play a role. I don't like to make that an excuse, but it's also an acknowledgement. If these are the genes I have, let me look at my whole family. Let me see if I have any family. Let's just look at the female family members. Do I have any that didn't grow up in the same environment? So it's not actually the food, but is there something else in my genes that makes me predisposed to have whatever? Um, my family definitely has that. So my family is Northern European descent. You know, everything that we've done with wheat and gluten these days, it doesn't work so well in our systems. It's an old, it's in, wheat is an old grain that had so many benefits that have all been stripped from it. But now my family all looks the same, that under the belly button fat deposition. So that's one small part of it, and it has to do with this enzyme and how active it is. Um, inflammation itself, and we just said, it was like when we choose this life of sport, we're gonna be inflamed every day. And every day, we are then more predisposed to have heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis. And you're like, wait a minute, I went to the gym for another reason. It was just the looking good naked. How is it? I don't want to have heart disease, cancer, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, we can manage it, all right? When we know that it's inflammation that's causing these problems, we can manage it. When we know you know that soreness that you get after a really good workout 24, 48 hours after? That's inflammation. That's a good workout. And I'm talking about in the muscles. Uh, the, the joints are something completely different. Please don't do that to your joints, ever. That's the biggest setback. That's the biggest reason why people quit, men and women. It's because they've done some orthopedic damage. And um, that's what we are trying to avoid. Okay, obesity itself just means the more fat you have, the more fat you get. It's not right. But again, here's a place to intervene and break the cycle and thyroid dysfunction and too much licorice, although licorice is good for your um, <laughs> adrenals. Yeah. <Devastating>. Yes. <laughs> It's my favorite thing. Like, there isn't really anything better in the world to me. Yes, exactly. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. And then um, glucocorticoid use, this is when you go to the doctor and they've given you a cortisone. But we also have them available over the counter now in the skin, like, oh, you shouldn't have that rash, that's so ugly, put some cream on it, instead of thinking, why, wait, wait a minute, why would you have that rash in the first place? Um, definitely when we use glucocorticoids for something like a rash, we definitely set the issue in deeper. So things like eczema, psoriasis, anything like that, definitely never put those topical things on there. That would be a time you wouldn't want it. You push the problem deeper into the system. Okay, this one is, is what everybody is talking about these days. How is it that the gut influences everything? Why do we say gut reaction? Why are we talking about um, managing depression, anxiety by changing our tummy issues. And that is because of this connection between the two systems. And um, I chose this picture not because your brain is really here, because we don't wear our brains on our sleeve, do we? We wear our hearts on our sleeve. But um, w this is to show you that if you remember that other diagram of the, the light being, um, 
this connection between the brain and the gut is, uh, so there are actual networks. If you think of your old um, computer cables, that was a DSL or whatever, does everyone remember those cables when you actually had to plug your computer into the wall if you wanted to access the internet? <laughs> yes. The dial-up. It was like, for, um, sometimes I wonder how old I am. And it's like, does anyone even remember um, dial-up? Okay. So we do have some dial-up connections that actually some cords that you could see if you were to do a dissection. It's called the vagus nerve. It's very, very important. But there's also this Wi-Fi that goes in between here and here. And if you wanted to know the meaning of life, we're going to learn that today at the Shiro Summit. The meaning of life is for you to support all the bacteria that live in here. Because they outnumber you, they're in the trillions. That's how many cells they have in here. There is way more of them than there is of us. Our, everything we do is to manage them. We are the personal assistant to all of them. And of course, they don't just live here. They live on our skin, they live in our brain, they live everywhere. We actually have what we call a microbiome. Is this word familiar to everybody? Microbiome, we have them everywhere. They run the show. So you have the good guys working for you or you could have the bad guys working for you. I wish it were that simple because um, then we could kill all the bad ones and be healthy, but it's not really um, quite that simple. But what they do, it's like we talk about physics and everything like that, those circle diagrams, that paper doll thing, and it would be very, very easy if new. Newton just had it right and he did have things right when it came to gravity. Gravity is real, it really works. We know this when we drink too much tequila. Gravity always works. However, the rest of what he was saying is wrong and it's very hard for us to give that up, right? Just like um, fats now, right? If you're in this business, you kind of have an idea that fats are good for you but you're like, wait a minute, I don't know. Like I heard something different when I was little um, because that was wrong information. And Newton gave us you know, some good truth bombs with the gravity and on the rest of it, he kind of just didn't get it right. And yet that's what we still learn in school today, those circle diagrams. It's not like that. So now it's quantum physics. Do we know this term, quantum physics? Yeah, we've heard it, okay. And then bacteria, Okay, they can't get everywhere they need to go, but they still need to communicate with their environment. We call this quorum sensing, and this is really how it works. So if you think maybe about social media, that's the best thing, I, example I, I can think of, is like when you put something out on a tweet, and I don't have Twitter, so I don't even know how you tweet or twit or whatever. <laughs> it's like, it's, if you put it out there, it was like everybody knows oh, so-and-so did so-and-so, and this is good. Or, oh, I can't believe Trump did that. That's bad. <coughs> that I know. Trump's at, th uh, the tweets at 3 a.m. out of his office are not good. However, it's like, it's information, and then we all have it immediately if we're all in front of our receivers for that information. So when something comes into your body and you're wondering, is this good for me or why is it good for me? How is it that I can eat just like this little one pill of curcumin and how can it have this effect on my whole body? How is it getting there? Quorum sensing, okay? And it's done by these bacteria as soon as the food <clears throat> leaves the stomach, it enters into the small intestine, and these bacteria there are the receivers, and they're the first tweeters, okay? So they go out and they tell the whole body all at once, and this is how the brain knows what it's doing. Psychoneuroimmunology is another whole group of medicine and study that tells us that when we put things in our mouths, like immediately our brain already has sent out a tweet as well. So that is not just the bacteria. So that is our nervous system. And again, if you think about that light being, there was light that was coming through the body and informing itself and light coming from out and informing us as well. And that is our ability to tell our brain instantly 
we all had this very, very, very strong, our ancestors did, when we put something poisonous in our mouth, we would spit it out immediately. Our dogs are still supposed to do that. If you have a dog, you would know when it gets into your chocolate, it was like, how could you? And it's like, um, you know that it's very dangerous for them. They should have never eaten or swallowed that chocolate because for them, that can be detrimental. So we still have that reflex. It's very, very poor now because we think of mocha frappuccino or whatever is normal. That should never go on our palate and we should throw up instantly. That's not a normal for a human to be putting that in our mouth. So that reflex has been dulled as we have more, more better, advanced, whatever. Really, it's not advanced for the body, but it's, um, it's where we are going with our super fast paced society and just having things super quick. And it was like, I can have all this access to sugar, so I'm gonna because it tastes so good. But, but we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't say that tastes good. Something like rice, we should find very sweet and that should be enough for it. So again, it's when we understand that we are more um, talking to ourselves like this than we are like those DSL cables, it was like that's when we can really understand how to make changes. And the super cool thing is that when you think that way, you all can think of ways to change it. So we don't have to say, well, what medicine and what supplement did she say? Not important. Think about it this way. How can I change the, the bad signal um, into a good one? All right, so again, here's the circle drawings again for the paper doll. And if we were to draw that out this way, this is how our brain connects. This is the immune system, how the immune system informs the brain, and then the brain is informing the rest of the body. And here we get to the norepinephrine, the adrenaline, and we know adrenaline, what it does to each other, and this is how it feeds forward through um, the body. So again, it's important for us as physicians to, to know that. Um, the interesting part for you is that you can see, uh, oh, oh, here's tissue injury. Here's a CrossFit workout. I'm just saying, do I need to give you a minute? CrossFitter, so we can see where it's going if you have a tissue injury. This is, this is really, I have to say, is the part that I don't like about CrossFit the most is the number of injuries because then you have to stop. And it was so cool that we were able to get people into the gym like that and to create this community. And then this happens to them so often and um, people die. <laughs> and um, people forget from their rhabdo because they didn't rest and they didn't listen to their bodies. And I'm hoping that um, at least by the end of this, we will know that listening, especially as women, um, is more important than anything. Oh my God, it's so boring, I can't talk about it. Oh, in defense of coffee. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So this is one of the other neurotransmitters that this vagus nerve uses, acetylcholine, and um, coffee is what keeps acetylcholine hanging around longer. So see the circle and then the diagram and the everything, but remember, there are some benefits there when you do it within reason. It's not competitive coffee drinking. Okay. I know we all want to do it competitive like the boys do, um, but that's not the way for everything. Okay, so yeah, again, th there's other ways for them to talk. Our, the, our immune system, the most immune system that we have in one organ is right here in our guts. So if we keep our guts healthy, it's like we're going to have better moods, um, but we're going to have better everything, much less disease when we just deal with this. And then also the brain says, oh my God, I'm so nervous, and then you get tummy troubles of the most embarrassing kind. Okay. Oh, and here's things that we can do. So again, it's like when you think of all the things like, oh, how do I like take my women in the gym and how do I change this whole circle system and everything? Well, these are things that you can easily do with your clients and for yourself. So it's like if I know that the better condition this DSL cable is in, you know, the better that I can um, manage my everything. And these are simple things that we can all do, especially this with other women. Wow, look how important singing is. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to do that. No, um, but, but it's just, um, 
Oh, yeah, and then here, again, for when we have food and everything. So, again, our culture has really changed where we think drive-through food and this Uber Eats, you know, it's fabulous. But when you use systems like that and do things like that, we don't have the time to cut and wash and chop and prepare and smell the food before it comes to us. So all the uh, build-up for the brain that really... Uh, really is so important f for everything for a really good workout the best thing you can do is bring your brain on board f to have a really good meal the best thing you can do is bring your brain on board in defense of wine <laughs> Because, because if you think about where we came from, um, especially as women, with our to-do, to-do, to-do list, we have to, everything to do, and it's like, how do we switch from that into, I can eat a meal, okay? So we can say grace and be grateful for where our meal came from. We can have a sip of wine, and then we increase the GABA. It's for real. It's science. It's science. Here we have a chemist it was like, that works in the in the booze business <laughs> and it's real um, we can make these changes so without overdoing it but again these are different ways there's so many different ways to get to the same thing to make the big changes that we need to make in order to have um, healthy bodies and some of these things are so easy and we're so um, a part of our traditional cultures everyone sat around uh, like this is how we ate food before everybody was together everybody shared community and then a lot someone would often say like thank you and be grateful and even if you have access to bad food quality when you make this connection you can I, I'm not recommending this for every day but this is what's possible because we're human because that's how powerful we are when we make connection with our food for it to be good you know, then we can have something that maybe was on the naughty list, but turn it into something useful for us when we've made that connection with the brain. So we don't need to be afraid of our food. Okay, and so digestion is everything. And so how we get to good health is going to be different for everyone. And this, this is the tenth reason I've said today is the most important thing that we're here. But it was like, if you can address everybody differently and find that yourself, like what is it that I need to get back into good and perfect health? And it was like, it's not the same as everybody else. The way that you got to where you are today is not the same path that your sister next to you took. So find your own way back. And that could be so many different things. And this gut brain access thing, we always say, yes, let's put some probiotics in there. Excellent idea. Yeah, excellent. All our ancestors ate dirt and uh, bugs every single day, and they were healthy. They died for other reasons. Okay, so they did live short lives, but they died for other reasons, not inflammatory diseases. Um, so we do need it. Okay, so the probiotics, they are crucial, but again, we can do that in other ways. And certainly when we look towards our genes, it was like, what did my ancestors eat that, had, that was fermented? So for me, mostly in the North, it's yogurt. But yogurt is not, uh, Yo player, I don't even know brands over here, but it's not what um, you would commercial see in a commercial grocery store. So yogurt is milk that sat out on the counter until it goes bad. That's what yogurt is, and that's what my ancestors ate that made them live a long life. But again, being from Norway on the very north, then they also had the fish that they would also leave out, and it would go nasty. But that's the bacteria. So anyways, now I just tell everyone to take a pill because that way I know they're getting it every day. And this is where kombucha comes in, and um, is this a thing over here? Kombucha Hughes here, yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fan, uh, especially if you look at the cost. It was like I'd much rather you take a pill that's healthy, no sugar, no nothing else like that. Kombucha is also made from a fungal source. Some people really have it. This is a fungus is a thing. Um, it's very strong. It's doing really well in the world. Thank you very much. It's not wasting time on Instagram or anything else. It has no distractions. It is proliferating. It's all over the place, and it's a big thing in our society. So I'm not interested in really more fungus in anybody. Okay. 
intermittent fasting, I just put this up there because I know people um, talk about it. It's like if this is the best that way that we can start, like again, I don't know how to start. There was too much information. How can I get a grip on everything? This is one way that costs nothing that we can get back. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Everybody has a different way to go back. And this whole like extreme and keto and everything is like so extreme for people. A keto diet might be fine if you're healthy. Fine, it might be fabulous if you're healthy. If you have issues with your GI tract, whether it's from a food poisoning yesterday or five years ago, it's like you're not just going to keto adapt. Okay, um, this is just a suggestion. Like, again, it's like it's not for everybody. It's like just start with some basic carbs and then you can add them in later. Carbs post workout, a great way to say, I'm sorry to your body. I'm sorry we just had a car accident, but here's a little treat for you. Um, it responds really well to that, especially in the beginning when we're maybe not so in shape and we have a trainer that's um, hitting us hard. And then again, uh, more carbs. This is uh, mostly for women. But like, so it wouldn't necessarily be the same in men. They actually can tolerate um, different things. Okay, here's the circle diagrams again. Um, but here are the things that we recognize. Here's fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And here is all the ways that we use it. To, like, again, everything we do, eat, sleep, breathe, is to get this ATP, all right? This is energy. And the reason that I wanted to bring all this in is because we're going to go into the system of mitochondria, the energy system. So when we talk about energy systems, we're like, oh, it's the adrenals. Oh, it's the thyroid or whatever like that. Okay, but what's our, like, tiny little building block that actually manages the energy? Energy, if we think about this is cash everything we do eat sleep breathe you'll see it all come in to the ATP this is what we want the more ATP that we have the more energy that we have and then our body innately knows how to fix itself we don't have to say like oh I cut myself how does it go back together we don't have to say it just comes together oh I poisoned my liver because tequila was so yummy it was like oh but I know how to fix it if I just had enough ATP I know how to fix my liver or like my lungs because I, I I don't know I hope we're not smoking but if that's the case you know it's like we know how to fix all the damaging damage that we do if we just have the time and the resources so we need all these things also we need to be able to get them through so we get um, through here this is the Krebs cycle citric acid cycle is this a familiar word for anybody anyways when you see here let's just look I think there might be another one. Oh, even better yeah <laughs> these circle diagrams as if we're so like two-dimensional and everything it's like here's the this is the mitochondria this is the powerhouse this is where we're making our ATP this is how we manage the hydrogen ions so the like a little electric parts we break our food down the hydrogen ion from the water we turn it back into water then we pee like it's like it's all very a, like a circle diagram um, this is in here is where we're generating our energy and then um, I think there's one more. Oh, okay, all right. So again, this is just a borrowed slide from somebody else because it doesn't really matter. This is what they look like. I was trying to give a more three-dimensional look of what um, a mitochondria actually looks like. Glutathione is our primary antioxidant that we have in our body. This is, again, from these electrons, this is how we generate and make our um, glutathione. So we've heard about oxidative stress. A good workout is very oxidative, okay? So it's good, it's good in one way, but it's creating so much damage on the other hand, so many free radicals. Um, that we need, we need to be able to put it back together. Otherwise, don't go to the gym. There's no point in getting into a car accident or emptying your bank account unless you have a way to put it back. Then those are the days or those are the times in your life where you don't go to the gym. Pick something else, okay? It's not the way um, to do it. Right, let's just see what the next one is. Okay, yeah, so the reason to do exercise, though, is that we get more of those little mitochondria in our cells. So we have more little packets of energy 
energy making machines in our cells when we exercise. So this is one of the response that we're after. So it's like after exercise we get them and then during myogenesis, making of muscles. The way that we make muscles is that we break the old ones and our body goes, mm -mm, something happened, what do I need to do? Oh, make a muscle cell, putting it back together. It was like when we're doing that, that's when we get more mitochondria. So more energy. This is why we go to the gym. This is why we go under that um, controlled, regulated stress car accident type of thing. And then um, just again, a reminder how everything is connected. It is controlled by T3. Okay, but we don't have T3 unless we have normal levels of cortisol. Okay, we can't get the T3 from the T4. We can't convert it into its active form unless the cortisol is at a normal level. It cannot be so high. Otherwise, we just don't get anything because it's saying run, 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 run. And that's not the system that we want activated when we're saying run, run, run. Okay, and all diseases, all of them are caused by mitochondrial dysfunction. So again, how do we get to the root of everything? It was like when we saw where the mitochondria are, when we saw the function that they're providing, it was like, how do we do that? What did we start from? We started from fats, carbs, and proteins. Well, we know what those are, so we have to get them. Um, but I guess what was missing from some of those things is all the nutrients. So all the nutrients make those little cell, those wheels go round and round. And if we don't have them, we don't get ATP in the end. So we don't get good mitochondrial function when we don't eat enough. So we have things that deplete us. We know an exercise, a good workout depletes us. We used a lot while we were in the gym. So how do you put back? So we have to take them in and we have to break them down and we have to absorb them. Okay, so again, we're saying when you change the mitochondria, if you just look at the world through the mitochondria, you can even cure diabetes and obesity. But because, um, yeah, go ahead. Let me just see if the next one. Oh yeah, so stress, we've been talking about it, but it's not just the one thing. Is there even an argument? Oh yeah, so the bad food is certainly a stress. This pollution is absolutely a stress. And then we put stressors in our mouth all the time. Some of us more than others. And it could be, oh. Uh, what does Dr. Phil always say? Every action you do either hurts your relationship or, or you either, I don't even know. You're either harming your relationship, every action, you're either harming it or you're helping it. Everything we put in our mouths is either harming us or helping us. So what are we choosing in this moment? Are we want to harm our body or help our body? So we have um, physical, chemical, heat stress, and then mental and emotional. So don't forget the heat stress. We have people like Wim Hof right now. Anyone have heard his name? crazy guy who sits on the ice says that we've become way too domesticated and we should be able to tolerate that kind of stuff. That's a heat stress. So he's stressing, you guys stress yourselves by doing CrossFit or powerlifting or anything like that. He's doing it with cold and in that response you get some beneficial improvements, but they're still stressors. Okay, so here we go. We have a stress. What what is the part of us that responds to the stress? How is it interpreted? It's interpreted through this system, the limbic system. And when we're making changes in the body, we should always go to that first. But it's not what we talk about mostly. So there's lots of ways to reach the limbic system, but this is the system. It produces the stress chemicals. It told the brain to tell the adrenals to make the cortisol. It's this system. It's what I thought about what I just saw. That post, it's like, those lips aren't real. You know, like, that's like those things that stress us at night. I have severe depression after Facebook every time. It was like, I have to stop that. What are people talking about? Um, it creates the negative thinking. Okay, our own system creates the negative thinking. The Facebook didn't create my negative thinking, but it sure feels like it. Um, and then it reduces our stress threshold. So we no longer can take our um, activities of daily living. Like we saw that woman in the beginning, she's trying to manage like cooking and her business and the cell phone and the children, all of that. Um, it creates uh, relationship problems. And, and this is what I deal with a lot with my players with a violent sport. All of them have head injuries. And when this, these structures are damaged, um, they all have relationship problems, are coming out of a relationship problem, and more importantly, which is hard to understand, they're looking for a way to create another relationship problem. It actually makes their limbic system feel better in the end. Um, and there's not just football players that have head injuries. 
so you can see this thing when someone is doing these things you're like but why procrastination why 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 would you do that and um, again sometimes it can be physical structural damage that creates that um, and then it it's in charge of our emotional reactivity to things so we manage the limbic system we can manage all of uh, these issues here Okay, here's a simple way to always know what you can do for yourself or others, your clients. It's like, keep it so simple. I love this at a women's conference. It's a dress. We have the diet. We have the rest. We have the stress reduction. We have the supplements. Everything falls into one of those categories right there. So everything that we can try and do or want to do can be simplified in this manner. And it would be great to address these all. It really would be. And the farther down the rabbit hole that we've fallen, the more of these things we need to get on board. But in by managing any of these things if we just did a stress reduction technique we would affect that limbic system the limbic system would inform the brain to tell the adrenals what to do which would tell the gut what to do which would allow you to digest your food to get in those ingredients that it takes to run those circles so that we can take our macros break down from our big steak, like how do we get the minerals and nutrients out of that piece of grass or kale or whatever it's called, um, out of there, how do we get them to make the circles run so that we get the ATP in the end? We can only do stress reduction and still achieve the same goal. But again, when we bring all of these things on board, Again, how do you recover from the car accident? Rest. Where are your gains made? At the table and in bed, okay? Those are the things that when we, we take out of the bank account, it's like here are the ways that we put back into the bank account. Okay, always the same. We can always come back to the same. So for all the things that we talked about today, this, remember the vagus nerves, this is the singing and the gargling and all those things. It's like, it's always the same way that we get back to health. So it doesn't have to be so fancy, but look at all the ways that we can come through it. If any of you do tissue work, or any of you doing tissue work on other people or have tissue work done, these muscles right here are super powerful and it's a good indicator, especially if it's only on one side, if we have one that's super, super sore, it was like that our adrenals are stressed. And a way, again, how are you going to approach the problem? You can do all of these things in order to work with the adrenals. But again, you could also have manual tissue therapy done on these pelvic floor muscles. Very, very, very powerful for women to make changes in their lives, especially because this is an area where we've been given a lot of shame. So cover it up. Don't talk about it. If we have been violated, people think it's, even as physicians, it's like if we're not mindful doing an exam on a woman, it can be feel very violating. And these are the issues in the psoas, like if you know how to squat properly, you know like how important these muscles are in order to allow the back muscles, these have to function properly for the back chain muscles to work. So again, we could just do uh, some therapy ourselves or have someone do it for us. And again, and address these issues of we're calling them energy um, through so many reasons and perhaps a sticking point when you can't move forward is to ask about things like that so maybe we've had a baby and it turned into a holy shit situation and this baby was like about to die so everyone is in our business you know I'm trying to get that baby out and then forgetting that you know there was a human behind what they were doing and trying to get this um, other life to to come into this world oh yeah so again uh, how are you going to address it take your pills <laughs> It's great. We have so many simple things. Like at our dinner table, we can make all the changes in the world by what we're choosing to put into us. So however you think about getting in the foods that have the super high quality nutrients to make the circles run outside of the macros, that's how we make the circles run to get the macros into ATP. You can address it that way. 
Okay, change our response. Again, it's the same way. This is the same thing that we talked about. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, heart math is one technique. Headspace, Holosync, these are other techniques in order to get there. Even if you have nothing else, you don't know where to go with supplements, all that kind of stuff. These things, by addressing the nervous system, address our digestion, it changes our brain, and we can make changes in our energy. And then um, commune, music, and journal. You can talk to yourself if you have nobody else where it's considered safe to talk to. You can only lie to yourself for three days. There'll be a lot of nonsense that comes out. After that, you can't lie to yourself anymore and the true issues are gonna come up in there. Okay, here again, here's some things to do, to do, to do. If you feel like you have to do something instead of realizing that you have to be something, here's the to do thing. So again, not nearly as important as how to be because if we can change the way we can be, we can change everything. Okay, again, the more birthdays that we have, we do have to change some things. This is a very short list of what's necessary. Those movement exercises that you guys did this morning, if you do those every day, it's gonna be, you can have so many birthdays before you're gonna notice a breakdown in everything because that was a great way to warm everything, including the brain which was what's fabulous about that. And those things can be done by yourself. Nobody has to see, you can wear whatever you want, have the great music on, because the music is also really helpful. It has to be music for you, not music for somebody else, but your kind of music. Um, and again, this is the way we do it. And it's not more as we get older. It's not more that gets us the goals that we wanna go. The rest, the pause in between. Music would be terrible if it didn't have any pauses. So is your exercise. <clears throat> crossfitters. The rest is super important. The rest is everything. That to do. To do, to do, to do, to do. If you are looking for things to do that work on the adrenals, that change the energy, these are the to do list right here. Yeah, because that's the stress response. So in the beginning, we have the alarm. In the middle, we have the um, accommodation, uh, like adaptation. And at the end, we're exhausted. So if we're at the exhausted, that's where the licorice comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and again, so this is, again, aging will change our mitochondria. This is why we all get old and die. This is why everybody gets old and dies. It happens to all of us. The number one cause of death is life. <laughs> so it's, this is programmed into us. So it, the quality of what we do. I used to work with someone who had, was a breast cancer survivor, and she had a group, a women's group, that she called filling the dash. So from the year that you're born to the year that you die, there's a dash in between that when we write that on your headstone there. She says, how can you make your dash the best? What kind of activities can you engage in that make your dash the best? Well, we can do so, 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 so much. Um, but this decline is, cannot be trained away like all the other aging mark. Um, all, all the other aging markers and this is why as we have more birthdays um, congratulations and you have to put more back into your bank account because your workouts are going to take more out of you so you can absolutely do your lifting and everything the more birthdays you have however more is necessary to put back when you do have any because we can't change that we are programmed as humans and interestingly enough we age according to our society so we learn these things like table manners we put the elbows on the table we keep the elbows off however you do it you learn how to age just like that by the people around you it's like oh my god i'm so old guess what you're going to be doing if everyone is doing this every day you're going to be doing that you're going to look like the people around you and you're going to be acting like the people around you which is why these groups are crucial for us because it keeps us young and it keeps us strong okay and this again is uh, so boring it's this is the way that we meant but this is everything for us everything is about the oxygen how we take it in and what we turn it into and this is how we get our ATP and this again is a non-negotiable declining part of having birthdays and so when we can interfere in this area by making more mitochondria by doing a workout it was like this is where we're gonna get the longevity this is gonna keep us stronger longer Oh yeah, okay, so again, it can happen, how we age can happen on the outside of the cell, on the inside of the cell.
So um, hypoglycemia, um, lack of blood flow, again, no oxygen, inflammation, and then the outside toxicity. So we have to remember this thing. It's important infections to manage them properly. Stress, we have so many ways to handle it. Nutritional deficiencies, we have to be able to eat and absorb what we're taking in. Hormones, we can keep them balanced by, again, working anywhere on that triangle. Um, decreased methylation, so that's a genetic thing, and those are the B vitamins, and we can add them if necessary. Um, decreased fitness, we're here so that we don't do that in medications. Medications pretty much age us almost all of them. Okay. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can buck up and do anything because this stress, all those circle diagrams that we looked at for stress, we do so much better than men do. Okay, so we're learning that through military experiments that we handle those situations better. We are more resourceful because we have to be. Next one. But we can do it with a little grace. We can do it with a little flair of being human and being a woman. It's like we are the other side of this um, yin yang symbol. It was like we can embrace this and do it with our grace and ease. We don't need to muscle through everything. And that is, again, <laughs> I wish I would have asked how many people they crossed it before I came here. But, anyways, it was like, please don't power through. Please, your female wisdom is far greater than a man's. That is why we are here. This is our role on the planet, is to nurture and to take the history and to pass it on for generations to come. Do this as a woman because we have greater gifts than they do if we embrace them. Instead of just saying, oh, what's a man lifting? Or how much do you bench? Well, I can bench this. But how you get there, use your gifts in order to get there because the final outcome, how much you bench, can be greater than what they do. Um, however, if we listen, 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 the, the worst thing that can happen is an injury and that puts you back from your training so you don't get where you need to go. That comes from not listening. So when we listen again, because we're way better listeners to the environment, um, to all the cycles of our, of our life. The, the moon, we're supposed to cycle with the moon because that is how we are connected. Men are not connected that way. We are connected that way. To what is above, to the earth below, we are connected. Do it that way. Oh, we do it better. I just said that. Oh, because oh, here's one of the key reasons as to why we do it better. So when we get stressed, we produce oxytocin, and that makes us think of everybody. So men, when they get stressed, only think about themselves. We know this. We already know this. I, you didn't have to come here to learn that today. But the reason that we do it better is because we have another hormone that makes it say, but what's best for my whole tribe? Like, yes, I do want to be safe in this danger, but also what's good for my tribe? Where are the children? Even if they're not mine, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to find them and I'm going to keep them safe. And again, this is how we manage uh, stress, tend and befriend. So um, that's the monkeys picking in each other's hairs. It's not just our species. We all do this. And when we do this, it's like we do better. And this um, great uh, 2006 breast cancer study, and it's about women who, if they have good female relationships, survive much better from their um, breast cancer. Because we are that powerful. This was so interesting, not at all necessarily related to this talk, but this is the power of who we are as women. We're the ones making all the choices. We're the ones making the healthcare decisions, not just for ourselves, but for everybody else. We're the ones who are making the buying decisions. We are ultimately the ones spending the money, so the money brings the power to the economy. It's like, this is what we can, can do, because, because this is the role that we play. So um, be strong. That's what you guys are here for, to be strong. And when you take the strength that you learned in the gym, use it in your communities, and you can make us all better, regardless of um, being men or women or anything like that. And I think that's the last.
Slide. Oh, yes. Together, it's better. Yeah. So definitely, um, our health, our immune systems are better when we find other women. And this is why I put that slide up in the very beginning, because I spend all my days with these smelly boys. So for me, this conference is amazing to see these strong women where I feel like, oh, I haven't done anything yet with my life. There's so much more to do. Like, I haven't worked uphill like to my capacity yet and that's just where we're just starting this conference so that's what's like so cool about it from here it's our launching pad when i know what uh, other women are doing instead of always living in my man's world which can make things um this creates a wine deficiency <laughs> so, so like i would just simply wouldn't need it today when i was just like i haven't worked hard yet this life is not hard at all if someone can start a women's gym like i still can't get over it this is incredible a women's fighting gym in saudi like that's amazing it's like i am not the hardest working person in this room so that's fantastic so thank you for letting me um, be a part and i hope i get a chance to answer questions